جشن آمد رسول اللہ اللہ جشن آمد رسول اللہ اللہ جشن آمد رسول اللہ اللہ بی بی آمنا کے پھول اللہ اللہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین all praise due to him because all the bounties are from him we seek from him to guide us to keep us on the right path to enable us to see the fact as fact and follow the fact <coughs> and to enable us to see the falsehood as falsehood and to enable us to avoid falsehood we seek from him to pardon our errors our sins our faults and to forgive all the believers and to strengthen us to be good human beings as he wants us to be and best salutations on his best servants Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad who brought the message the Prophet who brought the message from Allah and his Ahlul Bayt who continued conveying the message and preserving the message. And may Allah hasten the reappearance of the last Hujjah after the Prophet, <coughs> Imam Zaman Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadhar, Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajah Al-Sharif. The message of the Prophet through his real successors. The Prophet is a prophet because he has a message from Allah. No doubt. There is a difference between the Prophet and the Messenger. That's why we have 124,000 Prophets, but only 313 Messengers. Every Messenger is a Prophet, but not every Prophet is a Messenger. The Messengers are greater than the Prophets only. Out of the 313 Messengers, Five are the greatest, who are called Ulul Azm, those of the high courage. They are Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and then their master. Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi The Prophet Muhammad brought message from Allah. The message which aims to make the human being <coughs> real human being. Away from slavery. The slavery to shaitan. No one likes to be slave to anyone. I mean any other human being. What about being slave to shaitan? No one will accept to be slave to his enemy. And shaitan is not only our enemy, but he is our worst enemy. 
Allah in Quran tells us, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًا Surely and verily, shaitan is your enemy. So take him as enemy. Don't deal with your enemy as if he is your friend. Shaitan is your enemy. Inna shaitan lakum aduun mubin. Shaitan is your obvious enemy. In fact, our worst enemy is shaitan. Shaitan's aim is to destroy the human being and make him reach to the lowest possible degree. Asfala safilin. Allah created the human being with dignity. As he says in Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have gifted honor and dignity to the children of Adam. وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And we carried them. We carried the human beings, children of Adam, on the land and on the water. Or the sea. وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا And we made them better than many of our creatures. This status of the human being is being gifted to a human being by Allah because the human being is being given intellect. Anyone who acts according to the, his intellect, he remains high, respected, dignified. And anyone who loses control and goes down, leaving his intellect and following his desires, will be dropping down. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam was been asked a question. Who is better? The mu'min, the believer, or the angel? Imam said, my grandfather, Amir al-Mu'mineen, was asked same question and he replied that Allah created the angels and put on them intellect without desires and Allah created the animals and put on them Desires without intellect. And Allah created the human being and put on him both intellect and desire. So any human being who keeps his intellect controlling over his desires, he will be better than the angels. And any human being who keeps his desires controlling over his intellect and follows his desires will be worse than animals. See? The human being is created and dignified because of the intellect. Allah has given us the intellect as inner guide. Hujjatun batina. As Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. Advising Hisham ibn al-Hakam. You see his advice, great advice. In the volume one from Kitab Usul al-Kafi, great advice. 
In fact, jewels and better than jewels. He tells him Allah has created for every human being inner guide, which is intellect. And outer guide who are the prophets and the infallible imams. Inner guide alone is not enough. And the outer guide give the details. And the intellect always agrees with what the religion says. We are now celebrating the birth anniversary of the greatest prophet who came with the message which aims to make us better human beings, proper human beings, real human beings. The message which gives us the freedom and liberty out of the slavery to shaitan and slavery to our evil desires. I say evil desires because not every desire is evil. Allah created us and we need desires. If you don't have desire to eat, you will not live for long. If you don't have desire to get married, then the generations will finish without marriage. If you don't have desire to rest, your health will be destroyed and finished. So we need desire, but we need disciplined desire. Not desire without discipline. Desire without discipline is evil desire. Everyone wishes to eat when he is or she is hungry. But Allah tells us and the intellect tells us that don't eat if you are not hungry. And when you eat, eat what you need. Don't overeat. Overeating destroys, does not give any benefit but gives a lot of harm. And overeating is injustice to those who need to eat but don't have. I saw before three days a report that in America only, in the United States of America only, the amount of food which is wasted is how much you think only the wasted food in america is 950 billion pounds worth just imagine 950 billion pounds not dollars pounds worth which is wasted food they have got a lot of wheat which can cover the whole world, but they take it in big containers and throw it in the ocean because they don't want the price to go down. They want to get more money, let people die out of hunger. Keep aside that they overeat and they have to spend billions and billions on treatment. They say that the medicines which are used in America only, one country, treating the overeating like, you know, 
ulcers and a lot of problems of overeating <laughs> is enough. Only that medication is enough to feed the poor people in Africa and Asia and other parts of the world. So we eat, but with balance. And we don't eat any food which is non-halal. Because non-halal food is najis. Even if it is not najis, sometimes food which is harmful. If you eat it, you will harm your health. And we don't eat during the day of the month of Ramadan. So, our desires are being managed. And everything which is being well managed is useful. Everyone desires to get married. And Allah, the Prophet, and Ahlul Bayt, all of them encourage us to get married. So, the desire which is called sexual desire is managed well by marriage, then life will be built and society will be built and families will be established. This is the well-managed desires. When the desire is not managed, when it goes out of limits, like those who want to eat, they don't care, halal, non-halal, the month of Ramadan, month of Shawwal, they eat like animals. Their desires are taking them very down, very low. They become less and worse than animals. Those who have got desires to look at the other gender and they think that they enjoy it they are doing harm to themselves those who don't have the management of desires and the management which comes from the teachings and orders of Allah the prophet came to teach us <coughs> life management Have you heard about life management? Yes. Life management in all aspects of life. To manage our mind. What to believe in. What is right and what is wrong. The Prophet came to teach us to distinguish between the truth and falsehood. The truth is la ilaha illallah, which results in Muhammadun Rasulullah. <laughs> and Muhammadun Rasulullah results in Ali Waliullah. That is if you take the real meaning of La ilaha illallah. Not like some people who claim saying La ilaha illallah, yet they deny Ahlul Bayt. They have no real Tawheed. The Prophet came to teach us the meaning of life. Because those who misunderstand life, their life will be mess. You cannot use anything if you don't understand it. 
give a very good car, new car to a little kid who does not know how to do, what to do, how to use it. He will try to do something. He can spoil the car. Or give an airplane to someone who does not know ABC of piloting and flying and let him do what he likes. He might damage the airplane and his life as well. So we need to understand life first. Life has got aim. The Prophet came to teach us, to tell us, to understand life, that life has got an aim. You must understand the reason behind life and the aim. And where are we now? And where are we going to? The Prophet came to teach us the useful knowledge and to make us avoid the harmful knowledge. Don't be carried away. Don't be deceived by the titles, knowledge. We focus on useful knowledge, not any knowledge. Because there are some types of knowledge of damaging things. Those who teach people black magic. There's a knowledge as well. But it is an evil knowledge. Those who teach people how to gamble. Or how to use the smartphone to do wrong things. Sinful acts. This knowledge is evil knowledge. For that you read in the dua of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt, Allahumma arzuqni aqlan kamila wa ilman nafi'a. O Allah grant me perfect intellect and useful knowledge. Not any knowledge. Useful. Ilman nafi'a. The Prophet taught us about knowledge. He said that useful knowledge is one of these four. Number one, an ta'rifa rabbak, to know your Lord. To know that you were been created by him as everything was created by him. And he is the most merciful most compassionate, all-knowing. Every bounty is only from him. No bounty, but only from him. So first, an ta'rifa rabbak. Then, an ta'rifa ma sana'abik. To know what Allah has granted you. He gave you intellect, he gave you health, he gave you respect among people, he gave you the message of truth, Islam. Know what bounties Allah has granted you with. Then, an ta'rifa ma arada mink, to know what Allah wants from you. Allah wants from you to be a good person, a just person, a polite person, a cooperative person, a person who deals with others as he wants others to deal with him, a person who speaks to others as he wants them to speak to him, a person who gives everything its right, this life and hereafter, yourself and others. And the last, وَأَن تَعْرِفَ مَا يُخْرِجُكَ مِنْ دِينِكَ And to know 
what makes you away from your religion because many people out of ignorance go out of religion and they don't know they think that they are not doing something very serious so you have always to be careful to know the red line to know the limit not to go beyond the limit for example those who worship anyone beside Allah or those who think that the Prophet Muhammad was not the last Prophet as you find some people nowadays claiming that someone else is also a Prophet who was in the 18th century in the subcontinent that makes the person out of Islam because one of the basics of Islam that the Prophet is truthful. He said, La Nabiya Ba'di, no Prophet after me. I would like to point out that after every Prophet, his followers usually go different directions. And the only way to secure that you are on the right path is to follow the real successors of the Prophet. After Musa السلام, when Musa left his community and went 40 days, his community who followed Harun were on the right path. Those who left Harun, they went very far away from faith and they started worshipping the animal so we also need to be sure that we are following the successor of the, the prophet after him to be sure that we are on the right path why because it is not enough to believe in the prophet no you don't know that you believe in the prophet will continue or will stop somewhere because in the history we saw that lot of people believed in the prophets in one point then after some time they went right or left so it is not only to believe in the prophet but to remain believing in him to remain you find people who believe in the Prophet but after him they don't believe in Ahlul Bayt so they have went out very early there are people who believe, believed in Ali ibn Abi Talib after the Prophet but after six Imams after Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq they went aside even in the time of the Amir al-Mu'mineen himself his own soldiers who fought under his leadership some of them after some time they objected on him and they became Kharijis you know the Kharijis? Kharijis were ex-soldiers who fought under the leadership of Amir al-Mu'mineen so to be in the army of Amir al-Mu'mineen is not enough <coughs> You have to be sure that you remain. You remain. Go ahead. You find people who believed in Musa ibn Ja'far as the seventh Imam. After him, few doubted the Imamate of Imam Ali ibn Musa Ridha alayhi <coughs> salam. Who are called Waqifis Ahsan. Waqifis. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Waqifis who stopped. In Arabic, Waqif means stop. They went away from the right path. Okay. Some people went on, they believed in the 7th Imam, 8th Imam, 9th Imam, 
10th Imam, 11th Imam, and 12th Imam. They started claiming that Mr. So-and-so is son of the Imam. Son of the Imam? Any person who claims falsely about any infallible Imam is a big liar. He will be an enemy of Allah. A person who claims that he is son of the Imam. Like nowadays, there are a person in some country. He is trying to fool some persons who have got very limited knowledge. And he claimed that he is the son of the Imam. While everybody in his city knows that he is son of Mr. So-and-so, who is not the Imam. But he had this courage to lie because those who are out of his city don't know. So this is also one example of the deviation from the right path. That's why we always read every day in our salah, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم means keep us on the right path. Keep us steadily on the right path. Don't let us deviate. And the only way to save ourselves from deviation from the right path of the Prophet is to follow his real successors, the infallible Imams of Ahlul Bayt. Okay. Many people ask that my beloved grandfather passed away. Can you teach me something that I can see him in my dream? My mother passed away. Can I do something that I can see him in my dream? Okay. If you want to see your grandfather, why not to wish to see the Prophet himself in dream? Who is more important for you as far as guidance is concerned? Of course, be very nice with your parents and grandparents, but no one can be more useful for us than the Prophet and the infallible Imams. Now, if we imagine ourselves meeting the Prophet, And this imagination is not too far from the practical life. Why? The Prophet, though he is not with us in this world, but he is being informed about our deeds. That's why Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq was annoyed with some sinners and told them, why do you annoy the Prophet? They said, how come we know the Prophet? He said, yes, don't you know that all your deeds have been informed to the Prophet and he is annoyed because of your bad deeds and he is pleased with the good deeds. So the Prophet is not too far from us. In this anniversary of the Prophet's birth, if we meet him, And we reconfirm to him that whatever you brought from Allah is the absolute truth. 
And whatever you ordered, I will obey. Whatever you said, do, I will do. Whatever you said, don't do, I will not do. Such commitment can improve our life. We need to remind ourselves. We need to repeat this commitment. That's why in every salah we say, Assalamu alayka ayyuha nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In every salah, which also means the Prophet is alive. Because Islam does not teach us to speak nonsense. We don't say salam on a person who is completely dead. No. We say salam when he can get our salam and respond to our salam. And the Prophet is the person who gets our salam and responds to our salam. He and all the infallibles. That's why we read in the ziyarat, Ashhadu annakum tashhaduna maqami wa tasma'una kalami wa taruduna salami. I bear witness, O oh, Ahlul Bayt, that you see where I am standing and you hear what I am saying and you respond to my salam. When you say salam, they will respond to your salam. Let us confirm and keep on confirming our allegiance to the Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy progeny. And nothing more important than confirming our allegiance to his real successors, Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam Because Islam without Ahlul Bayt is no meaning. No meaning. Islam without Ahlul Bayt will have no difference with the Christianity of today and Judaism of today. No meaning. Real Islam is Quran and Ahlul Bayt. My respected and dear Mu'mineen and respected sisters, Everyone from us can, between himself and Allah, reconfirm his allegiance to the Prophet and to Ahlul Bayt to change his life and turn it into a better life. Turning into better life means to implement what the Prophet wanted. Young people, everyone from them can change a city. Really? When the Prophet wanted to migrate from Mecca to Medina, he sent a young man. Young man! Mus'ab ibn Umair. A young man of 16 or 17 years old. He sent him to Medina to teach the people of Medina the details of Islam, the faith and practice. See the importance of the believer who is young and how much he can achieve. We encourage our young people to take part in the mission of Islam, spreading the word of Islam to others, spreading the message of Ahlul Bayt to others, giving more time to the community work. Keep from your time at least few hours every week to do some work. If you don't have money to offer, you have time to offer. And sometimes time and effort is more important than money. 
everyone from you should keep some time one hour two hours more less every week for the community work for tabligh for serving islam and ahlul bayt in every possible way under the guidance of the ulama and the elders of the community but let us make our young generation more active you have seen of course in this country the jehovah witnesses who go door to door and they have falsehood and they cannot answer the questions that you put to them another example before a few days i was in an african country called liberia which is one of the poorest countries on the world we went to a village village of the i mean lot of people there are followers of ahlul bayt so we went there to see them and to start a school for their children while in the village i saw people who are wearing pakistani dress and very clearly non africans because all africans are well known when you see them so we asked what these people are doing they said these people are wahhabis who come from pakistan for tabligh just imagine wahhabis who come from pakistan to do tabligh in liberia the village was on the border between liberia and sierra leone when they can come all that way to do tabligh why not our own young people who have got the trust the real islam pay some attention give some time for conveying the message and serving the message of ahlul bayt alayhim assalam i'm sure many of our young mu'minin want to do service but they don't know from where to start decide to do something and take advice of the alims and the respected the members in the community who have experience and do something be a servant of allah not by wishing no but by practicing may allah bless you all and may allah grant all of us from his bounties more and more ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب او الله never leave us deviate from the right path and grant us from you a mercy you are the gifting always او الله keep us with your sincere servants o oh allah keep our life full of love to you and love to ahlul bayt and the prophet and love to every good deed which makes you love us and avoid us any sin and keep us away from the evil and the evil people and evil acts and evil thoughts and everything which has got any link with evil ya rabbal alamin keep us away from any evil ya rabbal alamin hasten the reappearance of our imam al mahdi alayhi salam and keep us with his sincere servants وصلى الله على محمد واله الطيبين الطاهرين
Allah, 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 Allah,